Hi, Nick Collier here, and this is my shop. Come join me. We'll have some fun. Okay, it's a couple hours later. Everything's cooled down a bit. We want to come in and bring our... Um, It'll open up that gap again. It's got a bunch of uh, flux in there and also a bunch of brass. Okay, there's a there's enough material that's been cut that we can get a measurement. And we'll know how far to go. And we are sitting at 17585. So, we got a ways to go. I left that one little spot open there so I could get a uh, a measurement from that and also get get my tooth centered in that so uh, we are there I'm thinking maybe we come in and just do a little bit of a chamfer on the right there just clean it up a bit all right now we're ready to go over and cut our our uh, your teeth. Okay, so we've got we're all set up. We're ready to go. Uh, we're uh, and we made our first cut. Now it is it isn't to depth yet. Uh, I'm I just want to go around once and then check. Uh, my depth. Well, we need to pull this thing out just a little bit. So we're going to just put our key or put our cutter right there and we'll know where we're at. Loosen it up, and we're going to come out just another quarter inch or so. Yeah, it should do the trick.
Okay, we got that. Now let's take a measurement and see what we've got. Ouch. And we've got 951, and what are we going for? Eight forty one. So almost a hundred thousand. A little over a hundred thousands. So we'll take it in fifty. Let's see what we can come up with. Fifty is going to give us pretty much what we want, and and then a cleanup. Alright, we made the full circle. Let's see how much we got now. Eight fifty six. And we're looking for eight forty one. So that's ten thousandths. Uh, 15 thousandths. So that's 7 thousandths per pass. That's going to give us a nice final cut. That should do the trick. Okay, we got ourselves uh, another gear. Uh-oh, broke off a chunk. 
but yeah, I think it's going to be is fun. set. There's a couple of little holes in here, but you know, so small that I don't think it's going to make any difference. The one thing that's going to make a difference is that. So we need to kind of come in and I think what I can do is just if I can get this thing solid, then it's well, it's still going to move a bit. Yeah, I may have to remount this and remount this at the same time. And then put sleeves in there. But for now, uh, we've gotten pretty well along. Time to go into town and do other things. I'll be back in the All right, well, the next stage of this operation is, uh, well, and I already bored this out and made a bushing and put it in there. Now, what I have to do uh, is I need to bore the bushing out to size. And I did that once, once, and the bushing was off center a little bit. So I think what I have to do is I have to come in and make a myself a shaft that's going to fit nicely in this sleeve here and that it'll point directly at the bushing then i set my set this uh this entire thing up on the mill so that this shaft which comes up and what goes in the, the mill head uh, or into a collet will be you know perpendicular to the mill itself. So uh, we're going to go over to lay then. I've already got one started and we'll go. Okay from we're gonna uh, in a sense reproduce this shaft so that we can get this uh, into that pocket and uh, and find out where our um, mill needs to be set up. So we're going to take this down to 870 and uh, we will do that right now. <laughs> That little uh, chip has come loose, as you can see. Now, well, let's go in. Ah. All right, we're going to put ourselves just a little bit of a... I think first we're going to have to... And then just a little bit of a spacer underneath that thing. Oh, we already have a spacer. Look at that. It must have slipped out or something. Yeah, that tightened right up. Good deal. All right, let's go. All right, I think we're right down to size. Maybe we're gonna knock off just a little bit of the roughness. Uh, 
that's better. Okay, let's take it over and see what we got. Okay, so we got our apron set up, and the only way I could figure out how to do this is to cut a shaft the size of this bushing here and run that shaft down until I knew it was absolutely straight and ready to to uh, slide smoothly down this part here and that looks pretty smooth to me so now uh, we come in and we can flip this over kind of get rid of that we can come in and take this out and get ourselves a boring bar that's gonna go down in here and that's gonna go down in here and unfortunately this one's just a little bit big but I think what I can do is just grind this backside off a little bit and then we might have a uh, a good cutting surface so I'm gonna go grind that off oh wait a second no this won't fit oh wait I have another boring boring head though and this one's gonna work so yeah it'll fit just beautifully all right so we're gonna go and uh, grind this back a little bit and come in and set the boring okay, head. We'll so we found ourselves a bit. We had to sharpen it. Probably spent a half an hour dinking around with that. We're all ready to go and we drop this sucker down and uh, you can see what happens. It hits about right there which doesn't bring us down into that hole. So, we're kind of stuck one more time trying to figure out what to do with this thing. But we got a nice sharp bit out of it. And so there's the positive. So, we came up with our measurement here is 745, but it, this thing's fairly worn. So I went up to the part where it isn't worn right there from here to that edge and uh, that's 749. So we got a four thousandths wear on that. So I think the only approach we can do is to come in with a reamer and ream this sucker out. And since we're nice and straight and we've got the mill to kind of back us up, why not? <clears throat> Let's get our collet in there. Get our mill bit in. Tighten everybody up. And see what we got. And 4,000 slop is a bit of slop, but it's better than, what, what was it, 16 or 20 thousandths? And we are sitting at zero and zero. Let's just see what happens. We can always bore out the, or press out the bear uh, bushing and do it again. Okay. We got to travel much slower. A little better. Can you see that? Let's get you in closer. There we go. And look 
looks like it's going to do just fine. We punched through. Now, let's see if it worked. <laughs> 50-50 chance, right? Ah! Let's chip the hell out of it. Now, get our shaft and it looks like it missed again I'll be damned well it's almost there <laughs> so I think what we can do is just uh, get some grit and go ahead and wear it in I mean, it is almost there. Okay. Okay, we got that to work. It was a little bit of a hassle, but uh, it worked eventually. We drilled out the hole for this bushing. And originally, again, it was cast iron. Okay, so now uh, it looks pretty good. No, oh, that no, that one goes there. This one goes here. This has the handle, and I think there's a gear that goes in between that. I believe. I mean, like immediately. All right, so uh, we couldn't figure out this uh, this thing, trying to get that to kind of calm down. But uh, the nut is a compression nut. So all we're gonna do is take the nut back off, compress that shoulder down a little bit, and then put it back on, and it'll be good and tight, and we don't have to super tighten it down. And it seems like it's working really nice, actually. So next is... Okay, so we got everybody in there, and uh, it looks to me like it's all functioning. This is in the power mode, so the power mode is run by this little gear down here, and that seems to be moving reasonably smoothly. Now we kick this out of power mode into hand mode, 
and that's our hand mode right there and that runs this up and down the the rack nice and there is neutral and nothing works okay I think we did it now I'm gonna dump a bunch of oil in here just to make sure that we're at least got an oil to start with and I'd say it's time to put this thing back in place let's go over and do that here slide it into place there we go I think what I want to do is get some oil out of those gears just for fun Some places all our screws so we have four of them interesting somebody put a gasket in here and the gasket kept the this channel from being oiled <laughs> so this goes back in let's get a some kind of shim underneath this that we can raise something under this side and I think a hammer handle will do the trick okay good bring this up well it's uh, now about two months later uh, I just started editing this particular video and realized that the last segment for some reason is missing and so we're back in the shop um, uh, as I said two months later and uh, uh, gonna do this last segment so uh, what happened was is we put this whole thing back together it all works beautifully now but the problem was and I'm gonna bring you in close and show you And the problem was, it says the rack right there was completely worn out. Um, and, uh, you know, part of the, the, um, the teeth were missing. Not missing, but worn completely down. And, uh, you know, I just didn't know what to do. I, you know, contacted a couple of places to see if I could get a new rack. And uh, nobody had one. And so, out of desperation, I kind of checked it out, and I came in, and here's the other side of the rack, and I literally just unbolted the rack, turned it around, and put the, the uh, tail stock in, in the front. And it worked. It works beautifully. Uh, hang on. We'll take a little shot of that. And, uh, you know, this whole thing wore out because that gasket was in there and would not allow the, uh, the oil to get down and oil things up. And that was uh, pretty interesting. Now, it's entirely possible that the last guy that owned this didn't oil it either. Uh, you know, that's certainly part of the process. 
but now we've got a working so, lathe. Got a good working closing lathe uh, and I'm very happy and uh, this is Nick Collier checking out.